Welcome to Normandy Park United Church of Christ to our Sunday morning worship here on Labor Day weekend. Uh, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here and we're so grateful that you joined us today. We begin uh, September with a creation series and I invite you to meditate on this um, phrase from Psalm 96. All the trees of the forest sing for joy. Today we begin our creation series celebrating the trees. So with that, let us listen to the sounds of the singing bowl. Our first song is This is the Day. We'll sing verses one and three. Please join me. join me in the words of gathering. I will read the light print and please join Nancy on the bold print. We envision the forest and the trees surrounding our homes worshiping with us. I will step in for Nancy. The resolute cedar, the broadleaf maple, the Douglas fir and apple tree. Western white pines, hemlock, and Sitka spruce, tall timber where squirrels and lichen find their home. We imagine the song of the forest near Mount Rainier in the Cascade Range and Olympic Peninsula. We join with the fauna of the forest in praising God. Rich sounds of green tree frogs and timid moths, ancient owls and swirling bats, piloted, pileated woodpeckers, and the squabble of the recently returned wolverine. Chipmunks call and ravens play, marmots and butterflies. We celebrate the song of the forest, the living lungs of our planet. Thank you, God, for this great creation. Let us worship our holy God. Our next song is De Colores, Sing of Colors, and we'll do verses one and two uh, just in English.
Let us pray. Holy and beloved God, we celebrate in the beauty of your creation. Remind us each day to thank you. For the air that we breathe, thank you, Lord. For the water that we drink, thank you, Lord. For the rich bounty from our vegetable gardens and local farms, thank you, Lord. For the shelter and warmth that we experience, thank you, Lord. For beauty and delight, Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your abundant creation that surrounds us. Remind us to delight in it and in you, even when life is hard. Amen. Continuing our creation theme, our next hymn is All Things Bright and Beautiful. share our sacred story. I will be reading from Psalm uh, 96 verses 1 through 13, and this is from the New International Version, Made Inclusive. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for God comes. God comes to judge the earth. God will judge the world in righteousness and the people in their faithfulness. The second reading is Romans 13, 9b through 12. 
all of the commandments are summed up, summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the words of darkness and put on the armor of light. Here ends the scripture. So our reflection today, of course, focuses on creation, as it will these next weeks. In many churches around the world, September begins with a series called The Season of Creation, which lasts through October 4th, which is St. Francis Day. Otherwise, we know it as Blessing of the Animals Day around here. And um, you might be guessing October 4th will indeed be a day for us to bring our animals to Zoom worship, whether they're our furry friends or maybe a, a stuffed companion in Matthias's um, situation. And it will also be October 4th will be World Communion Sunday. So um, it will be a culmination day of all that we have celebrated this month. Since we took time to study earth keeping during Lent and because we continued over the summer with a book study on climate change in the church, it just makes sense for us to celebrate the season of creation with our siblings around the world. Psalm 96 reminds us that the ancestors of the Hebrew religious tradition felt deeply connected to the earth. It shows us too that they understood something about the covenant they made with God. We are participants in that same ancient tradition the psalmist understood that creation and all that is within it is from God. And so, of course, the heavens and the sea and the land would sing for joy to their creator, rejoicing in the gift of life in every manifestation. And at the same time, the ancient peoples of Israel attended to their responsibility of being faithful to God. I would say they desired to be in right relationship with God and also in right relationship with the natural world that God created. In Romans, we hear Paul speaking to an early church in Rome of the importance of abiding by the greatest commandment that Jesus taught, loving your neighbor as yourself. Scholars argue that Paul's letter to the Romans is really him laying out the foundation of how the early church needed to live out this higher law of love. Love is action, not love as merely a feeling. It is through action that love is truly known. Love is embodied, love is in motion. Love shows up again and again through acts of justice, acts of mercy and acts of kindness. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law, says Paul. We spend at least some amount of time as Christians pondering what Jesus meant in the Gospels and what Paul says here about loving your neighbor as yourself. On a good day, we attempt to apply this law of love to our daily actions and thoughts towards people around us. On a not so good day, we forget. We don't remember and we risk othering people and objectifying all that is around us. One minister deeply involved in environmental work in the UK reflected in a study I read this week that neither Paul nor Jesus seemed to argue for replacing the law's specific commandments with an alternative ethic of love. Rather, love and action is the rationale for the law, whose commandments show how to love ought to be expressed, not just for a few neighbors, but for all, including justice and care for the poorest, for animals, and for the land, addressing life from every angle, including the sabbatical commandments concerning debt and the structure of the economy. That is why love is the fulfillment of the law." End quote. God's love is expansive. God's love should affect our economy and our planet and our relationships in the world. What I am pondering is, how hard would it be for us to widen our view 
to fully include the animals, the trees, the soil, into what Jesus and Paul mean about love of neighbor. The more I study eco-theology, the more I am challenged to adjust my own people-centered view. Perhaps our intense focus on just our own selves is what has gotten us into so much trouble. Our greed and desire to take from the land, never giving back, never really thinking about the generations that will follow or the cost of extinction of plant life and animal life. On some level, I do think we know that God's wisdom and God's love is broader than ours. God so loved the world that he gave his only son to be with us, to walk this earth, to be baptized in the river Jordan, to sit under the olive trees, to preach and heal by the lake shore. Jesus was of the land and part of the land, just like his ancestors were. This journey of seeing scripture differently, of understanding Jesus' commandment to love more broadly, that love of neighbor also encompasses then the humble honeybee, the tiger lily, wolves and sheep. This has been like a little series of aha moments for me and not all at once, aha moments over the years. It seems to me that this ethic, this idea was in the text all along, but my eyes and ears were not ready to see it or hear it. So what would it mean if we loved all of creation as our neighbor? I'm reminded of those brain games where you are asked to describe what you see in the picture. Did you see a horse or a girl? Did you see a vase or a person? Do you see a white dress or a blue dress? What pops up for us first, it is, it's one or the other. We don't see both at the same time usually. And I think about that and how we have to train our brains to be able to see both at the same time because our brains just want to select one thing to focus on at a time. So it's perhaps time now, long overdue, for us to expand our view and train our brains to hold that love of neighbor means more than just loving uh, human beings, but also the flora and fauna of the earth, the small birds flitting in the trees, the waters for the salmon, the ice caps and the polar bears. God breathed life upon the waters. God breathed life into every living thing. God breathed life into us. That is the first point I want to make today and the main point. Love is not limited to people. God's love is more expansive and God's love includes the whole of creation. We will come back to this idea again next week when we hear from Jesus directly on the subject. The second idea I want to wrestle with this morning has to do with salvation. Paul said in his letter to the Romans, Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the words of darkness and put on the armor of light. The word salvation that Paul uses here comes from the Greek, soteria. Soteria also happens to be a Roman goddess the goddess of safety and salvation. She is the one who keeps people from harm. And so Paul would have known about Soteria in that way too. Paul's vision of God's salvation includes safety. It includes keeping people from harm. It includes a present and future vision in which God returns to rescue and deliver God's people. For Paul, salvation is always connected to something that we have done wrong. We are to be saved from ourselves. I'm simplifying a ton, but Paul, you know, he's that guy who is first to point out who is not meeting the mark in community. I mean, all the epistles are full of it, where people just went wrong. Remember, Saul, before he became Paul, he loved to persecute newbie Christians because they were not following the law. I can only imagine 
just how much crow Paul ate over that one himself. It's in his personality though, and his nature to seek perfection. And I see Paul really as one who strove for perfection that probably was otherworldly. Uh, but his standards still set the church in motion, focusing more on sin, focusing on trying to scrub out some human tendencies that aren't so easy to scrub away. And for this, we now have countless books and theologies on salvation and sin. We have all been affected by ideas of original sin that go back to St. Augustine and Adam and Eve. We all have been affected by the judgment of other Christians as to whether or not we are good enough Christians, or maybe we don't even want to claim that title anymore because it seems so much of Christianity is going sideways these days, and we don't recognize the Jesus that some Christians talk about. The truth is, sin, salvation, and Jesus are now tricky subjects, depending on who you're talking to. But what if, like love of neighbor, we widened our view, I'll go all the way out of the frame, we widened our view to see all of creation encompassed in being kept from harm, rather than just people. Catholic theologian Elizabeth Johnson in her book, Creation and the Cross, The Mercy of God for a Planet in Peril, describes God's salvation with descriptive words I can really get behind. She sees salvation as making life whole, salvation as liberating, healing, forgiving, restoring, cleansing, and opening up new possibilities. For her, salvation absolutely extends beyond human beings to the whole of our planet and cosmos. She believes that God is merciful and absolutely cares about the destruction that has taken place here by human hands. Her view is that God accompanies us and the planet on this journey that we are on, that through Jesus Christ, God is present in our suffering and in the planet's suffering. God has not abandoned us or the planet and never will. So while Paul was probably not attuned to climate change or a planet that would one day be in peril, he did charge us with a call to action, to live and love like Jesus today. A new life in Christ has already dawned and we need to meet the new day, no matter how challenging it may seem. And so for day, today, I charge you with taking some time to think about these two ideas that the commandment of love of neighbor is inclusive and not only for people, but all species and life on this planet. And that God's saving grace is expansive and abundant, including all life forms. I want to invite you now into a moment of prayerful meditation. And if you brought a piece of nature with you to worship today, I invite you to hold it in your hand. And if you didn't, I'm gonna grab what we have here today. That's okay too. It's just something for us to focus on as we have this prayer time together. So I invite you now to close your eyes uh, if you're comfortable. And I just invite you to imagine your favorite place in nature that you like to visit could be a place that's easy to get to around here or somewhere that you haven't been to in a long time. Just take a moment to imagine that place that is so dear to you. Now, once you have an image of that place in your mind, let's imagine that it's quiet, that there's no airplanes, but maybe you hear an occasional bird or the whisper of the wind. What do you see? What do you smell? Are you standing on a pine needle floor, forest floor surrounded by green mosses and tall, tall trees? Or perhaps you're by the ocean, breathing in the salt sea air, listening to the crash of waves at your feet. As you admire this favorite place of yours, I invite you to say thank you. Thank you, God, for this favorite place, this refuge, this beautiful place in nature that we can visit in person and in our mind's eye. Thank you, God, for loving us, for loving all of creation. Thank you.
Thank you for never abandoning us and companioning us our whole life long. Amen. I now invite you to open your eyes when you feel ready and with gratitude in our hearts, let us prepare our hearts and minds for communion. And um, if you can hang on to your pieces of nature and keep it close for communion as well. And I will just say that if you don't have your communion elements with you right this minute, take a quick pause and go grab them. <laughs> Set this down. So let us give thanks to God, creator of all that is, Christ who calls us to wholeness, spirit that advocates and blows where she will. Thank you, God. We thank you for everything. A long time ago, you decided to start something new. Out of that newness came all that exists. Out of that newness came the stars in the sky, the planets and the moons the water, the air, and life itself. Here in this place on this planet, you created life that took many shapes, single-celled creatures that became many-celled creatures, many-celled creatures that became plants and trees, became animals, became us. Throughout our history, we human beings have tried to understand how we came to be and why we came to be and how to be in relationship with all of creation and with each other. Throughout our history, we human beings have tried to understand how all things came to be and why we came to be and how to be in relationship with you. Sometimes we have not done a good job of listening. Sometimes we have not done a good job of loving. Sometimes, oh, sorry. Sometimes we have not done a good job of being in relationship with you and with what we, you have created or with each other. Forgive us, O oh God, we ask for your help. Open our ears, our eyes, our hearts, and our minds so that we might listen to your call, so that we might hear the needs of what you have created, so that we might speak those needs and live your love always seeking a just world for all, for your people and your planet. When our ancestors made mistakes, you sent them guides to help them on their way. Priests and prophets, teachers and healers, grandmothers and grandfathers, aunties and uncles who called people back to your love. And in Jesus the Christ, you were with us and remain with us to teach us, to love us, to save us from ourselves. Thanks be to God. Jesus laughed with those who laughed and cried with those who cried. He understood what it meant to be part of your creation. He taught us stories of seeds and sowers, of bushes and birds. In his love, he called us back into relationship with you. And so we pray the words that he gave to all of his disciples, with all the love a mother can give, and with all the love a father can give, saying, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. grab my sim simple elements here. So on that night of the Last Supper, Jesus gathered with his friends. He took a loaf of bread, and here I've got a slice, and he gave thanks, saying, Blessed are you, Lord God of the universe, who brings forth grain from the earth. He took the bread, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body given for you. Each time you eat it, remember me. He also took a cup full of wine and he gave thanks. He took the cup and he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink it. This is my forever promise to you and to everyone 
each time you drink, remember me. So we will pray and this is time for all of us to lift our hands over our elements and we're all going to call upon the Holy Spirit together. Blessed are you, O holy God. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon our individual breads and cups that they and we might be the body of Christ. By being made one in this body, may we embody the change that brings healing and wholeness into the world. Amen. You are invited to eat your bread and drink of the cup saying, this is Christ's body broken for me and this is the cup of the new covenant. Body broken for you. Cup of the new covenant. That's tea. <laughs> yes, it's true. We have holy tea this morning. <laughs> this is so beautiful. It's just wonderful. So with that, when everyone has had a chance to take of their communion elements, we will sing. And our communion hymn for this Sunday is Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. And we will not repeat the last line. So sharing our joys and concerns this morning, we show and tell. We didn't do an intergenerational this mor moment this morning, but if anyone has share show and tell from the nature they brought in the house with them, mine is rosemary from my garden, just FYI. <laughs> but we have other sharing and time, talent, and treasure also. Let's see. I know Lynn has something to share. Yes, I do. I have several some things to share. Um, I'll start out with uh, last Sunday, I um, mentioned that we might be opening up the Church World Service Emergency Depot. Uh, it turns out that we, they don't need our help yet. Hopefully, they're hoping not at all, based on you know, not, the, the, not having the need. But um, if you are um, considering helping out, remember that we might still be doing it, but not, not at, at, at this moment. Um, I also want to remind folks that I have these going the right way that we have uh, two things going on. We have uh, the Bible and Brews that will be starting um, on uh, the 18th at seven o'clock, and we'll be studying from the Gospel of Mark and so read chapter uh, one and be ready for that discussion. And then uh, for our book study, that will be starting on August 23rd 
September. And read chapter one for that. And if you need either book, we have some extras. So um, we will get that to you. So just let us know and we will, um, or if we need to buy some, we will buy some as well. But those are the two things going on then. And then the Enneagram uh, study will be eventually, uh, Amy will be sending out an email or contacting folks and we're got the, I've got the first DVDs all copied. So ready to go with our workbook. So once people um, identify that they want to participate, then we will get those DVDs out for you to uh, view. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I want to say too that Vicki and I met with uh, one of the Boy Scout troop leaders this past week and just wanted to give you a brief update there. Um, while there is still daylight um, in the late afternoon, like actually like early evening hours, the Boy Scouts will be meeting on Tuesdays outside on our property, learning basic things, doing socially distant appropriate activities with masks on, um, like learning how to tie knots and knife skills and other things like that, whatever the Boy Scouts can do. Um, safely outside and they'll do that until it just gets um, too yucky out and dark too early and then they'll go back to zoom again but I just wanted you to know that um, they are on property and I'm glad that they can utilize the space and um, it helps the parents honestly because the boys need to have an activity to do so <laughs> so thank you church for making that possible for them um, while we're in this strange season Alice has something. Uh, I just wanted a big reminder for the uh, Hospitality House walk this weekend. So you can walk on your own or with a friend um, six feet apart, walk, ride your bike, hike, whatever, be outdoors um, to raise money for Hospitality House. You can either do that or just send a check or um, go to the website and donate online. And you can mail your check to um, right to the house and uh, they will get it. So you can either walk or not walk, just send a check or donate online. So that's, they're doing a whole weekend, the 11th through the 13th. So thank you. Thank you, Alice. Um, also wanted to give you guys an update. There was an um, email letter that went out and then for some people they got a letter letter, but uh, we're changing the office hours at church a little bit. Um, both Kirsten and I have online learners, um, both in middle school, and we've identified that Mondays really is the day that we need as parents to be available to them to make sure that they are doing what they need to be doing with school. So. Um, starting with Labor Day, um, which isn't a school day, of course, but starting this coming Monday and going forward, the, the uh, Kirsten will not be in the office, and that is my day off. So uh, church life happens now, you know, Tuesday through, I guess, Sunday, but, you know, Saturday is what it is. But um, just wanted you to know that, that that's a change up. Um, the church building remains closed to the general public, but uh, of course, some of some of you do stop by um, during the week and I just say continue to give a call ahead of time, but know that Mondays Kirsten will not be there going forward. Okay, so as always, you are invited to um, send checks in, mail them, donate online. Um, if you are feeling so called, so led to donate to uh, the fires and um, hurricane and other disasters that we are dealing with in this country. UCC disaster services are, um, is available online to the United Church of Christ or directly to Church World Service, which of course is our partner organization. So there's many ways to give and we're so grateful for all the ways you give and all the ways that you care for the earth in your giving. So thank you for that. And we respond to our giving and to God's graciousness in singing the doxology together.
So as we celebrate this Labor Day weekend, I invite you to think about God's love for us and God's love for creation and how it is wider and more expansive than we could ever imagine. And that maybe our love of neighbor expands wider than we can imagine to love of creation as well, to the smallest creature, to even the housefly, to even the things that are annoying. How do we love all of the earth and all of our neighbors? And this we sing what I think is a traditional Labor Day song, if I had a hammer. <laughs> Please join me in singing. that somebody had some actual hammers out there. <laughs> That'd be the Salisbury clan. <laughs> I know, I wish there was a way that we could just, um, you know, have the cacophony of all the, of all the things to do that together because I know the Salisbury's would have a lot to contribute. <laughs> Enjoy your Sundays, everyone. Stay on if you'd like to visit for coffee hour. Mm -hmm.